Well, we're on 1 Samuel 17, verses 1 to 27. Uh, and I've titled it, When Mindfulness in the Mundane Turns into God's Mighty Acts. When my, Mindfulness in the Mundane Turns into God's Mighty Acts. I need to think on that one a bit. Mindfulness in the Mundane. It's when we recognize the day to day stuff and we do the day to day stuff faithfully that God will bring about his mighty acts. See, if we look for the mighty acts and we miss the day-to-day -day stuff, they never come. It's in the little things. See, it's in the little things. That's me, huh? Now, that was a quick preach, wasn't it? <laughs> Go home now. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> well, Donnie says, hey, kick-offs at 12. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Soko in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephes Damin between Soko and Azekah. Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Elah and drew up their battle lines to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites the other with a valley between them. The champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp his height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and his iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out? and line up for battle. I am not a Philistine, and are you not the servants of Saul? Am I not a Philistine? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistines said, This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Now David was the son of an Ephrathite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons, and in Saul's time, he was very old. Jesse's three older sons had followed Saul to the war. The firstborn was Eliab, the second Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. The three oldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. Now Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brother and hurry to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle position, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines, facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of the supplies, ran to his battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. <clears throat> the king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and remove this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him this is what will be done for the man who kills him. May God add his blessing to this is holy word. Well, F.B. Meyer once said, I used to think that God's gifts were on shelves one above the other. 
and that the taller we grew in Christian character, the easier it would be to reach them. And now find that God's gifts are on shelves one beneath the other. It's not a question of growing taller, but stooping lower that we have to go down, always down, to get his best gifts. When we are mindful of the mundane, it's then that, we, that they turn into mighty acts of God. It's when we bow low that God can use us to his glory. The key to success is to be mindful in the mundane, being humbled before God. Something we talk about a lot, isn't it? To be humble. <coughs> but it's hard uh, to recognize that in ourselves. Are you faithful in the little things? Today we are going to stop short of the power and magnitude of God through his servant, the God who defeated Israel's army. In fact, we're going to talk about David's, we're not going to talk about David's magnificent feat at all. This portion of scripture starts out in a very simplistic, mundane way. So we're going to look at the mindfulness in the mundane, the moments that make up a difference, and the motivation that fails when we despair. Three M's. Mindful moments and motivation. Imagine you, David, and you don't know what the day holds. You've no idea how it's going to end. Well, that's most of our days, isn't it? We've no idea how our days are going to end. Imagine you, David, and you had to listen, and you uh, you had to listen to your father that night before giving um, giving instructions to take food to your brothers at the battlefront. <coughs> Imagine you're like David, and it's like a day like every other day, but God's at work. David's just a boy who was left behind to take care of the sheep. He's the little one, the runt of the family. But little things matter. David has a job to do. And it says, I'll get up early in the morning and get someone to look after my sheep so I can run the errand for my dad. David's just a delivery boy. He has no idea what or how the day will develop. It's just another morning, another day. It's just the mundane. But David was mindful. He will do the little things that appear mundane as he wants to honour God in the day-to-day -day activities. He didn't just leave his sheep. He got a shepherd to look after them. He got up early in the morning. He didn't lie in and, and miss things. And I presume he got the food together with the cheese and everything else. Mindfulness in the mundane turn to mighty acts of God. When do we move from giant watchers to giant killers? David had an attitude of service. David had an attitude of commitment. David had an attitude of obedience. He had an attitude to honour God. He was humble. He was willing. He was faithful. He was humble. He was willing. He was faithful. Or another way of putting it, he was faithful, available, and teachable. He was fat for God. I have to get that in there. He was fat for God. He's just a boy that had been given a little assignment, a little task. It's just the mundane. But God is grooming him for greatness. If he couldn't manage the little things, he wouldn't get the great things. No matter how small things look right now, it's bigger than you think. No matter how small things look right now, it's bigger than you think. No matter how small you look right now, you are bigger than you think. I'm talking spiritually here, not, not physics. <laughs> That's scientism. <laughs> you see, if you collect
collapse over the little things, God will never give you the bigger things. We have to open our minds to new possibilities. A possibility that God is moving you to something bigger. Are you getting this? Do you realize this? God doesn't leave you static. He's moving you. And, and if I went around the room this morning and asked you where you were five years ago, asked you where you were three years ago, asked you where you were a year ago, you will see that God is moving you and is moving you as you deal with the little things in your life, as you're faithful in the little things in life, he will start to use you to do bigger things. David didn't know Goliath. He didn't know what he was walking into. He just thought he was on an errand. And that's like us. We just think it's the day-to-day -day life that we're living. We don't realize we're walking into something bigger. He's just a boy doing the mundane. Many of us haven't met our Goliaths, but he's coming. Your past has been preparing you for your destiny. The little things in your life haven't been, have been getting you ready. David had fought the lion and the bear, all in preparation for the fight to come. He had been mindful and this has built his confidence in God. And this is what he would need at the close of this day. God was preparing David and God would blow his mind with a mighty act. We know the story so well that David, the runt of the letter, goes up against this massive man, Goliath, and defeats him. But that's a couple of weeks away yet before we get to that. In Ephesians 3, 20, 21, it says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. In this, this verse actually blows your mind. God will not limit himself in your ideas. He won't limit himself in in your mindset, even by what we ask for. He says, this day is bigger than you think because he is able to do far more abundantly than you can even imagine. Just because the day starts out in the mundane, it doesn't mean it's going to end that way. We are to be faithful over the little things before we can be faithful over the big things. It's how we handle the little things that determine our future destiny. Do you realize that the next big thing is a little thing? I'll say that again. Do you recognize the next big thing is a little thing? Because it's little steps that lead you to the bigger thing. And if you don't take the little step, then you'll never get the big step. If David had overslept, if David had another appointment, if David couldn't be bothered, if David was lazy, he would have missed the most important thing in his life. You see, moments make a difference because God is at work in the moments. Everything matters. Everything is important. But we miss it. We don't think that way. We just think it's another day. And we get up and we do what we have to do through that day. But God is at work in the moments. With God, timing is everything. David had to show up on time. He arrived just as the fight was starting. His timing was perfect. And it's when destiny and time collide that God had set all this up. It had been predestined. God has set things up. Are you walking into something God has been setting up for you for a long time? Just reflect for a moment on your life so far. All that you've been through, all the difficulties, all the blessings, all the 
issues, the movements in your life, those crossroads you come to, and you take decisions to make that change your life. Maybe you moved house, maybe you moved area, whatever it was. And it brings you to this one point. You see, you are predestined for this moment in time. And God is setting it up for you. Amazing. You see, we need to show up for the battle, and that's half the battle. You can't win if you don't show up. For David, it's just another morning. Hey, hey, hey. it's the battle's going on. You see, for David, it was just another morning. It's just another fight, but God had... Uh, uh, God, for God it's his providence. The timely preparation for f future eventualities. And it started way back. It started with Naomi. It started with a drought, a famine in the land of Israel. Naomi and her husband and the two sons decided to go to Moab where there was food. But her husband died. And her sons got married to Ruth and, um, what was the name? I've gone, or, or Was that right? Um, and, and then they died. And then Naomi made the decision to return back to Bethlehem. And Ruth, who was a Moabitess, she was not a Jew, uh, came back and then she met with Boaz. This is all to do with the providence of God. And then Obed was born and then Obed had Jesse and then Jesse had David. You see, it was God's preparation for a future king. Not just David, but the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the Messiah, the saviour of the world. But it all started out in the mundane. It all started out with Naomi making the decision to go to Moab. You see how God works in the mundane. David sets off walking into the mundane, but God has mighty acts to perform through this little boy. And David meets Saul at the right time, at the right place. The providence of God makes sense out of the nonsensical. We don't see what God is orchestrating, and it might take a lifetime to see why things have happened. You see, God is the potter, we are the clay. It doesn't have to do, doesn't have to make sense to us because God has never lost control of our lives. Do we trust Him when we don't understand, when it's crazy, when it makes no sense at all. Goliath was a large man, six cubits and a span, which is anywhere between eight and a half feet to nine foot two. And he had armor and weapons to match his size. They probably weighed somewhere between 150 and 200 pounds. This was a big man and strong enough to carry and use these huge weapons. And he shouts out to the Israelites, choose a man for yourselves. And let him come down to me. I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight together. You see, Goliath used this uh, massive, bold challenge to the armies of Israel. And what challenges are you facing just now? Do you recognize your enemy in your situation? What's stopping you reaching your destiny? Are you being mindful of the mundane? And can you see the moments that make a difference? Well, motivation fails when we're dismayed. When Israel heard Goliath, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. 
This was Goliath's exact intention, issuing the challenge. The reason why he came out with full battle clothes on all his equipment and paraded it in front of the Israelites was because he wanted them to be dismayed and in great fear. You see, he was going to defeat Israel on fear alone. And Satan wants to defeat us by placing fear in our hearts. In any contest, and the competitive amongst us will know this, it's always useful to demoralize your opponent and strike fear in their hearts. <laughs> First, it may keep you from ever going to battle with them because they're so afraid. And secondly, if it does come to battle, they'll fight with fear and apprehension. And so, with your words, you've done a lot to win the battle before it even begins. And this is a significant strategy of the devil against believers. Are you already feeling defeated? Are you feeling demoralized? You see, Satan will use these weapons to make us give up or want to give up. Just remember we are to keep doing the little things well and God will give us the victory. We all too often look for the big event that God will do and miss the importance of day-to-day -day living for Christ. But Saul had special reason to be afraid. Goliath was a giant among the Philistines. And, and if you remember back, I think it was Samuel, 1 Samuel 9, Saul was quite a tall guy. He was a head and shoulders above the Israelite men. Saul was obviously going to be the logical choice to square off against Goliath. And we can expect he knew others expected him to fight Goliath. You know, all the little Israelites were looking at him and saying, well, he's a pretty big boy. Saul, do you fancy him? <laughs> Who's the tallest? <laughs> and everybody looked at Saul. Well, as the battle loomed, Saul was dismayed and greatly afraid. At one time in his life, he was known as being fierce and successful as a military leader. But that was before the Spirit of the Lord departed from him. As the Spirit left Saul, he so did his courage. You see, our courage comes from the Holy Spirit. Our courage comes from being faithful in the little things. And when we're mindful of the mundane and see that it turns into the mighty acts of God. This is how we get the victory over Satan and his lies. We keep mindful of the little things. We recognize the importance of God's timing and we show up when we're supposed to and we recognize our adversary, the one who wants to destroy us and defeat us. As you hear this message this morning, what's running through your mind? Can you see the little things of faith you need to keep on keeping on doing? Can you see God is preparing you for something greater? Can you see his providence working out in your life? Can you see Satan's attack and know that he, that you have the victory in Christ Jesus? God has been setting up all things all through your life for this very one moment. You're walking into something God has been setting up for years. Are you ready for it? Be mindful. Take the moments, don't despair, and don't lose your motivation. Let's pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. May it really resonate with our souls. Lord, as we think about the day-to-day -day activities, may we live Christ moment by moment. May we know the presence of the, and power of the Spirit of God in our lives. May we not just take for granted each moment of every day, but look, after, look to you in faith, trusting you and listening to you as you direct our paths. Lord, as we come across difficulties and, and the giants in our lives, may we not be uh, dismayed, may we, not be, uh, may we not despair, because we know that it's an act of the devil upon us. He wants to separate us, he wants to destroy us. 
He wants to rule over us. And so, Lord, as we come before you now, we know the power that is in Christ Jesus mm. to give us the victory over the battle. And so, Lord, help us to be the people you want us to be, that you would exalt us uh, to the higher things. But, Lord, keep us mindful of uh, the, the moments of each day. Keep us mindful uh, of the mundane, the day-to-day -day living as you would have us live. And so, Lord, use us to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.